So what's the best CPU for music production? Well, this should be a simple question, right? With many VSTs running in parallel, you want the fastest multi-core processor that you can afford. But, but, of course, it's not quite as simple as that. I recently upgraded from an old Dell. It was an i7-4790, I think. A fourth generation Intel i7. The thing that really pushed me to upgrade was the performance when exporting tracks from Cubase and when pushing them through mastering applications such as Cloud Bounce. To be honest, I had no trouble in Cubase with quite complex projects with multiple VSTs, instruments and effects, and audio tracks. I never really had any CPU issues, even on the fourth generation Intel i7. So I did some research into the current generation CPUs and discovered a heap of problems with the Intel 12th and 13th gen CPUs, specifically those which use the hybrid architecture and the Atom or otherwise known as E economy cores. It seems, without going into too much technical detail, that the scheduling of the E and the P cores relies on a combination of microcode in the CPU which is called the Intel Thread Director and the Operating System Scheduler. And in summary, this just does not work very well. At least, there's no guarantee it will work very well. There's a heap of discussions online in the music community and, in fact, the wider community, anyone that uses productivity applications, virtual machines, and even, to some extent, gaming. The Thread Director and OS Scheduler try to make the best decision they can on where to place tasks. If these tasks are deemed as background tasks, so they're not directly affecting the user's desktop interaction, they're likely to be placed on the Atom or E cores. This makes sense in a desktop OS where the tasks that the user is physically interacting with need to be fast and responsive. This doesn't make sense when you have background applications which are a high priority, or at least should be a high priority, but they're not in the foreground. They may be processing audio, they may be running VSTs, they may be performing some other functions which have or should have a real-time priority, yet the scheduler thinks these are not important so they can be shoved to the background. In DAWs, this causes audio dropouts and other issues. In fact, some time ago, Steinberg issued an announcement instructing people not to use these hybrid CPUs. And this statement is still in effect today. So, my decision was to move to the fastest CPU I could without moving to a hybrid architecture and essentially needing to disable cores I'd paid for in the BIOS. My CPU of choice, uh, which was the best that was available to me at the time of purchase, was the Intel i5-12400. This has six cores or 12 threads. And you may ask, how much of an improvement was this? And my honest answer, not much. I didn't have performance issues in Cubase before, but I did sit here watching a bar, a progress bar, move across the screen whilst exporting audio. And to be honest, I would often export audio. I would then push it through some simple mastering like Cloud Bounce. I'd then export the file again. I would listen to it and then I'd find an issue that perhaps I'd missed previously. I'd go back into Cubase. I'd make a few changes. I'd export the file. I'd push it into Cloud Bounce and export it again. And every time I export audio, I'm sat watching a progress bar. The 12400F, I think, is much faster. At least it's much faster in multi-core benchmarks. It is faster in single core, but when you're waiting two minutes to export a file, waiting one minute 30 is still one minute 30. I mean, the situation might be better than that. I could have been waiting two minutes before, and it's now one minute, but I'm still waiting one minute. And if I'm waiting one minute, I may as well go and put the kettle on, in which case, Two minutes makes no difference. So what is the best CPU for music production? Well, 
Really, unless you're running a million plugins and you're hitting issues with latency or anything else, any, I would definitely steer clear of hybrid CPUs from Intel. I would have considered AMD, but I've I have bad memories from years ago of Cubase having issues with AMD processors, so I tend to go Intel because I want to avoid such issues. And I know these issues are long in the past, but like many of us, I have memories of these things happening, and I just I don't want to sit here debugging computer problems when I could be spending time productively writing music. And honestly, with the hybrid architecture from Intel, I would suggest checking out AMD. At least I would, until a couple of days ago, I think it was announced that AMD again will be switching to this hybrid architecture. So my recommendation for now is go for any non-hybrid CPU that matches the performance that you're looking for. And to be honest, CPUs nowadays are so fast, the only thing you'll be waiting on is single core performance, and that isn't going to change anytime soon. And for those looking for a cheap, affordable, but high-performing processor, the 12400, or I think the 12600 doesn't have economy cores either, is a, a great value for money processor. I would say don't go crazy on the CPU, add some extra memory, get some NVMe storage, especially when dealing with large amounts of audio, fast IO to disk is probably more important than the latest, greatest CPU. I hope that's useful in some way. As always, if you like what I do, like, subscribe, new channel, I'm still finding my feet. Thank you. Goodbye.